Hey everyone, if you're watching this video, it's because you recently purchased an LED tail lamp retrofit for your wagon. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a halogen vehicle and you're putting in US LED taillights or a halogen vehicle that you're putting European taillights in, or if you have a US LED tail lamp car and you're retrofitting in just the European LEDs, the process is all pretty much the same. And instead of having you read a piece of paper, which I still will include, you can now watch the video and get an idea ahead of time of what you're gonna need in order to do this. So before I get into that, let me first point out and say that I'm not responsible if you screw up your vehicle. If you happen to break something or something goes wrong, I'm not responsible. So of course, do at your own risk. This goes for pretty much anything vehicle modification related across the board. That being said, every tail lamp and harness that goes out my door has been personally handled and tested by me. So I can assure that when it reaches to your door, it is operational as it's supposed to be. So without any further ado, let's get right into the retrofit. So what we're going to need to complete this is, of course, your taillights and adapter harnesses. If you choose to go this route and not modify your stock harnesses, they should be included in your kit if you ordered them. As far as tools go, you will need some sort of flat pry tool, also known as a bone tool. You can also use a flathead screwdriver for this, though be careful not to scratch. You'll also need a T20 Torx driver of some sort. You'll also need a ratchet and an 8mm socket and extension to get into the tight spot of the inner tail lamps. Going over to the driver's side of the vehicle first, start by removing the cover, which gets you into where your toolkit is. Surprise if you didn't know your toolkit was in here. And you will need to remove the connector from the tail lamp by releasing the red tab and removing the connector. Here's a close up of what these connectors look like. You have to release and pull out the red tab first in order to be able to remove the connector from the female connector. It's very, very important, otherwise you will not be able to do it. It's also important to note that your harness may have an extra tab that will prevent your connector from being inserted into its receiver. This can be rectified by shaving it off with a sharp razor knife. Next, you're going to want to remove the tail light. This is done by twisting, lefty loosey, righty tidy, the white wing nut that is spring loaded into the assembly. So you're going to loosen that by hand. Hopefully yours is loose enough to be able to do by hand. Some, some are pretty tight and uh, more so than others. Um, this one on mine happened to be pretty, pretty tight. So this will come right out by hand, no tools necessary. Set that aside and the next thing you'll be wanting to do is carefully push out with your other hand supporting the tail lamp and this should allow you to wiggle and slide out the tail light assembly from the body of the car and set aside for later use. Installation is of course the absolute reverse of the removal. Just simply slide in making sure everything lines up just so and you're going to want to take that white wing nut again and tighten it in. Again righty tighty lefty loosey. Uh, it's really up to you to t how tight you want to, to, to go. I usually go until it cannot be tightened anymore. Again, some sides are different than others. You can only go as far as your fingers will allow you to grasp on there as well. But obviously if it stops moving, don't keep going. Then you want to insert the body side of the harness into your adapter, making sure to close the locking tab and then your adapter into the tail lamp, making sure it is the correct side for the correct harness. Then you can put your privacy cover back on and lock it closed. Moving over to the passenger side of the vehicle, it's pretty, everything's identical except for the cover to get into the tail lamp. You'll notice there is a small tab and a large tab. That's the only thing you have to take notice of. Moving on now to the inner tail lamps that are on the tailgate. You need to start by removing the plastic covers on the trim, which can be kind of tight. They do loosen up over time, but they are a little tight. So forewarning, you'll need to use your bone tool for that to pry them open, set them aside, and of course, undo the wiring connectors that go to your tail lamps. I use my bone tool to get the red tab pulled out because my fingers kind of don't fit the greatest in there. You can also then unplug your 
harnesses, set them off to the side, and now grab your ratchet and 8mm socket and extension and remove the two nuts on each tail lamp assembly. Once these nuts are out, you can pull the hatch down a little bit to get a better look at what you're doing. And you'll push from the back side carefully because they might be stuck. And you're going to lift it at an angle in order to get it out of the tailgate. Next up, you have two options for running the rear fog harness through the inside of the hatch trim. If you do not have a rear fog option for your kit, then disregard and you just move right along. But if you do, you can either use a snake tool to pull it through the openings which you, create, which you opened up in order to get to the harnesses and pull it straight through from the left side to the right side. Or if you want to be a little bit more anal about it and run your wires personally, which I personally like to do, you can lower the hatch trim. Now the whole trim does not have to come off and forewarning, it can be a little tough to release the clips inside, but there are four screws that need to get removed first. You will need to open up the emergency triangle flap in order to access two of those T20 screws, put them off to the side and there are two more to the outer edge. You can see uh, for me, it's on the outer edge of the emergency triangle frame. Once those screws are out and put off to the side, what you're gonna wanna do is, uh, this will require some brute strength a little bit, or you can use your pry tool to help as well, but you're going to firmly hold and on the hatch and pull down, it should pop out one clip at a time. And uh, you'll, you'll clearly hear them pop. And you'll have to pull in a couple areas, again, it is. It can be very tough, but uh, you have bone tools to help you do that. When it finally gives way, it will grant you just enough access. Don't pull down too much, um, otherwise you'll bend your plastic, but it'll give you just enough access to be able to run the wiring harness from the left side to the right side. Obviously make sure that the passenger side harness is on the passenger side and the driver's side is on the driver's side as you don't want to have to do this all over again in case you got it wrong. Make sure no wires are going to be pinched when you clip everything back together and you'll notice that there are clips that in, in the grooves they need to be make sure they're in properly and make sure all of them line up properly with the receptacles in which they go into you might have to wiggle them into place a little bit you don't want to start pushing it all back together and start bending things that becomes expensive so you can push some of them back into place you'll hear them snap in other instances you might have to give a little love tap and uh, this is my preferred method is a nice firm thump and they'll all click right into place. Next, you want to put your screws back in. Remember, there are four of them and uh, they go in in no particular order. Just be sure when you're putting these screws in that you don't drop them once or uh, even twice and make yourself look like a fool on a professional video. And uh, it does go in the hole and twist righty tighty, lefty loosey, of course.
Next up, you can now plug in your body harness into your adapter harness. Again, making sure those locking red tabs are pushed closed. Now you can take your new assembly and install carefully. You will want to start with the outer edge first and rock it into place. Followed by putting on the two 8mm nuts that holds it into place. I don't have the torque spec offhand, but these don't require a ton and uh, please don't use an impact. There is no ugga ugga to tightening these. Just uh, tighten them by hand till they don't feel like they can really go any further. Then connect your adapter harnesses into the tail lamp, making sure everything, all the excess is tucked away safely where it won't pinch on both sides. And then you can go ahead and reinstall the covers on the trim. Keep in mind, they kind of go in two different directions at the same exact time. They slide inward and up at the same time. So uh, it will take a little bit if it's your first time removing these covers. It's now going to be time for you to go do some coding to your vehicle to make sure this is all properly working. And I'm not going to list that here because there are too many applications and you'll have them received in your email. Once all your coding is done, go ahead and enjoy. Everything should work as mentioned, as described, and uh, you will now have a nice looking rear end with all the functions you've ever wanted and so much more. And you'll be a better person because of it. Thank you all so much for Taking the time to watch this video, if you have any questions, please reach out to me at info at thebeardeddetailer.com. And uh, thanks for watching.